it's great to be here with you tonight. Great to be here um, at Calvary Baptist. Um, interestingly, as I listened to Nathan's story, I realized, oh, spring semester, senior year of college, <laughs> something happened to me. Uh, my friend Rob uh, came to me, uh, along with uh, our friend Karen, and Rob uh, gave this great idea. Uh, he said, hey, why don't we, uh, the three of us, uh, we, we all believe in Jesus, we all believe that Sabbath is a good thing, let's take Sabbath on Sunday. And I'm thinking, that's easy for him to say. I was student teaching um, at the time. Any teachers in the, in the house? We, there's a couple, okay. So I was doing my student teaching, which is the most stressful time um, of your college education if you're a teacher. Uh, it's the time when so much is required of you, uh, plus the fact that you have to get up at like 7 or 6.30 in the morning to get to your school, which is unheard of for college students. And Rob, who could sleep in till 11 o'clock on Monday, uh, says, hey, let's do Sabbath. And I'm thinking, I, yeah, I'm not so sure that's going to work. I'm not sure that's, I'm going to be able to do that. Um, but believing that um, this was a good thing, believing that certainly the scriptures talk about Sabbath, I thought, okay, um, I'm going to enter into this process, going to enter into this, this discipline with my friends. Um, even though I was pretty scared about what was going to happen during, uh, during the course of that semester. Well, uh, kind of make a long story short, um, things went through the semester. I had a great uh, teaching experience, and at the end of the, uh, the semester, um, I got a 4.0. It was my only 4.0 that semester. Uh, doing, so, you know, I don't, was it because I took the Sabbath? I, I don't know, but what I do know was that during that time, during that Sunday time that Rob and Karen and I would meet together, it was a simple, some simple things we would go through. We would, we would uh, attend church in the morning, we, tend to, we would attend worship, uh, and then we'd come back, we'd eat in the dining hall, and then we would just, we would hang out with each other in the afternoon on Sunday um, and, and talk together and pray together. Sometimes we'd watch a movie, sometimes we'd go for a walk if the weather was good. Um, and, but we wouldn't study, that was the big thing, was that we, we stayed away from our books during that time and really offered that day to the Lord. Um, and so it really wasn't Sabbath versus success, it was Sabbath and success uh, for me during that, that senior year. So that, that started me, I, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna say this started me on a journey of continuing with Sabbath all the way through uh, my life, but it was certainly a taste of what, um, of what Sabbath could be like uh, in my life. Let's see if I can get this. Do I need to do something different than what I'm doing? No one's going to tell me anything. That is not what I want. We're going to go through them backwards, if that's okay. All right, here we go. First one. Um, I was struck this week as I was putting this talk together that, um, that obedience uh, comes from the Latin word Audier. Um, it doesn't come from the root of die. If you look at the word obedience, die is right in the middle. Um, <laughs> obedience doesn't come from the word for to die. And sometimes I think, when I think about obedience, like I don't, I, you know, I definitely am one who believes that rules should be interpreted liberally. Um, and so um, when I think about obedience, that's a, it, that, that's a hard thing to do. But if I see it coming from the Latin word, or audir means to listen. It means to listen. So to be obedient is to listen. The first thing that we have to do in order to be obedient is to listen, listen to what the Lord has to say. Um, Henry Nouwen, um, a, a spiritual writer, says, the spiritual life is about, um, is about moving from deafness to listening, uh, moving from deafness to listening. And Oswald Chambers says, we don't deliberately or consciously disobey God, we just choose not to listen. I think that's probably true for many of us in this room. We don't, con we don't consciously turn away from God, we don't consciously um, d disobey, but we choose not to listen to God. Everyone has a rule of life. Cookie Monster 
has a rule of life. When's the next cookie coming? How many cookies can I have? His, his life, Cookie Monster's life, is ordered around cookies, is ordered around how many cookies he can get, how, what, what they're gonna taste like, what flavor they are, does he have to share? His, his life is ordered by cookies. Um, Usain Bolt is the, is the runner uh, on the right there, and Usain Bolt is the, has been known to be the, the fastest man alive, winner of many uh, awards for sprinting. He obviously has a rule of life, a way to order his day that's probably a lot different than Cookie Monster's rule of life. Um, he, he, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of discipline in, his, in Usain Bolt's um, day, where he probably thinks he does every day of, of getting enough hours of sleep, of eating the right things, of exercising, of weight training, um, doing sprints, doing wind sprints. Um, so everyone has a particular order in which you decide to live your life. How is it that you're going to live your life? How is it, what kind of rule are you going to live your life by? Uh, what's the structure of your life going to be? So when life gets crazy for you, and you know, here we are in New York City, life is, when is life not crazy? <laughs> um, when life gets crazy, um, what's the default mode for you? Um, what happens in your life? Where do you turn to to make sense out of the craziness or to at least make sure that the craziness doesn't get more crazy than it is? Who do we listen to? I'm gonna go back to, to obedience, right? Who are we listening to to help bring order to the chaos in our lives? What is it that keeps us on track? Wayne Muller, who's, who's actually written a book on Sabbath, and actually, you know, Nathan Bixler and Nathan Meeks and I are up here. There have been, there's much that's been written on this subject, so if you can go home and read some more books on Sabbath if you're interested, but we're just telling a few stories here about our lives. But Wayne Muller has written an excellent book on Sabbath, and, and he says, our willingness, willingness to rest depends on what we believe we will find there. Does... Does rest, does Sabbath rest mean I'm, I have to be totally alone? Does it mean that, I have to, that I'm praying all day? Does it mean that I can't do anything? Is it, do we define a Sabbath rest by all the stuff I can't do? Or is Sabbath rest defined by the fullness of that particular day? How is it that we define rest? When, when we rest, when we rest, we surrender the compulsion to have our life defined by what other people say. We surrender that, that compulsion. And we also surrender that, the compulsion to derive our identity by our accomplishments when we choose to rest. Um, one, of the, one of the meanings for Sabbath uh, is simply stop. Stop cease. When we as followers of Jesus rest, we choose to turn our listening ears to God, away from the world's thoughts about us and to our maker's <coughs> thoughts about us. In resting, we listen to God and we turn the world off. Um, remember, we come back to obedience, right? There's this great verse in, in um, Isaiah 30, 15. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. Well, what is, what is rest to us? Is it something that's empty? Is it something that seems dark to us? Does it make us restless? Does rest make us restless? Sometimes it does, right? Um, what do we believe we'll find there? When we choose to enter into Sabbath rest, what do we believe we'll find there? When, when I think about a rule of life or I think about my life with God, um, whether or not I will take Sabbath, I have to start with my image of God. Who is God to me? Who do I perceive God to be? <coughs> well, is God 
I'm going to put forth a couple of ideas here. Is God like the, the, um, the scorekeeper in a basketball game who marks down how much time we're spending in the game, um, our free throw percentage, or how many fouls we've committed? Um, or is God the coach who's only concerned about winning? Is God someone uh, I need to hide from? that I only show him my good side? I only, I only want him to see him when I'm doing the, the good moves in the basketball court? Or is God like a judge who listens to the arguments, tells, tells us when we can and cannot speak, who meets out judgments capriciously, making you and everyone else in the courtroom anxious about what's gonna come next, wondering about when the gavel is going to come down and how hard it's going to be. Well, maybe to you, um, God is like a kindly grandparent who you see maybe once or twice a year. They don't hear very well. Um, and so because they don't hear very well, there's someplace else in the house and you can kind of do whatever you want because they're really not going to know anyway. Um, is God like that? Perhaps to you, God is like the, the cosmic watchmaker who set everything in motion, put all those gears together that they all work, but now he's, he's stepped back. He, stepped, he has stepped back because he's paying attention to something else. So he's distant and far off. Or maybe God to you is like an absentee uh, or uh, workaholic father who never has time for you, or worse, is abusive um, or unfair. What do we think we'll find when we get there? Is God one of those? Is God something like that? Or is God more like the, some of the songs that we sang about? And, and again, I think, I think all of us in this room, probably we wouldn't say, we wouldn't say to someone else, oh, that's how God is. Or maybe some of us would. But many of us wouldn't say that we would say, oh, God's like the God who we just sang to in the worship songs. But when the rubber meets the road, when life becomes crazy, who is it that we think God is? What's our picture? What's our image of God? So silence and solitude is very much a part. It's essential to, to rest, um, to be silent and to have solitude. Um, Will it be painful? Does it feel painful to us? Um, it will be painful if we, if we resist the biblical understanding of God as merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. That's the biblical image of who God is, and that's what we have to keep at the center. So essential to rest Silence and solitude is essential to rest. So some of the things that, um, that, I, that what's important to me about, about rest, um, rest for me is being alone with my thoughts, alone with God with my thoughts. Rest for me means limiting my options, so having simple meals. Rest is slowing down, like today, this morning at breakfast, uh, we had some sliced uh, strawberries that were wonderfully ripe, and in the middle of breakfast, I forked one of the slices of uh, the strawberry, and I just held it up and just appreciated, I know it sounds silly, but I, I appreciated the strawberry. Uh, it's not something I, I, you know, I engage in regularly, but I, I could slow down. I, I took my time, and I appreciated the beauty of this strawberry that God had created. I can do that because I'm in a restful place. Um, rest is having a day with nothing on the agenda, not having to be someplace at a given time. I love that on a day of rest. Rest is calling a truce on worry. It's saying all the worries that I have, I'm calling a truce. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to worry. It's calling a truce on worries. Rest in this season of my life has meant um, visiting 
a neighbor every Sunday night. Um, I have a neighbor who has um, emotional illness, and um, uh, I go over there every Sunday night and uh, sit with her, and we, we watch a TV show. I bring my dog, who's a, a great therapy dog, um, and just to sit and to be with her. Sometimes rest is about, you know, for Jesus on the Sabbath, the Sabbath was about doing good. The Sabbath was about having mercy. The Sabbath was about liberating. And I think um, for my friend, Sunday nights can be liberating just for that um, hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours that I'm there uh, with the dog. Rest is listening to my body for what I need rather than uh, turning to social media for what I think I need. Um, it's, it's my heart's plan not to look at uh, work email and, uh, and social media on my Sabbath. Uh, it's my heart's plan. It's not always the plan that I follow, um, but it's the plan that I endeavor to, uh, to offer to the Lord. It's a work in progress, and God is always gracious, and that's I hope that you would hear that from us speaking tonight, that uh, Sabbath is not about being legalistic about things. It is about um, God being gracious and offering us time. Um, I've talked a little bit, little bit about rule of life, and maybe we can talk more about that um, uh, afterwards, but um, rather, than, rather than give you a kind of a list of uh, uh, of, of activities that make up a rule of life or that make up, um, uh, yeah, that make up a rule of life. These are kind of the categories that I think of or, or the, the, um, the, the broad umbrellas that I think of when I think about a rule of life. So uh, growing in like and with Christ. So there's intimacy there, there's um, character there, and there's mission there, growing in like and with Christ. Um, moving from my false self to my true self. So um, there's, there's a lot for me in, um, so one of the things for me is that I, uh, I am someone who's, who's a peacemaker, but, uh, but often the way that I make peace is by not being involved. Um, and that there's a falseness about that. And so uh, one of my Part of my rule of life is to is to start work, is to work on that to 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 notice it when it comes and to and to enter in. And the third way is to live in, for, and from freedom. You notice by this, I'm I'm very much about prepositions. Uh, prepositions are very important to me. Um, but to live in, for, and from uh, freedom. So those are just some kind of broad categories that um, I think about when I think about um, having a rule of life. Um, and just I'll ask you before I turn it over to, to Nathan. Um, remember that the, the, the scriptures, particularly the Old Testament scriptures, talk a lot about, um, about remembering. And uh, Wayne Muller's last line there is, remember what is quietly sacred. And it's difficult to do that if we're constantly in motion, if we're constantly moving. Uh, so remember what is quietly sacred. Um, listen to the voice of the one who knows us best, the one, the God who is always gracious, our gracious Father, our good, good Father, who invites us into freedom. And that really is what, um, what rest and what Sabbath is.